Hey, I want to talk briefly about uh, how we can measure the rotation of the Earth using GPS data. Uh, there's all this freely available GPS data online, uh, which you can get through the CD, CDDIS. And um, they've got a whole system of uh, GPS satellites and uh, GNSS receivers, of which have uh, daily data. Uh, they're actually sampling every second, and they're putting all this data up online. So this is a great resource for accessing uh, GPS data, and you can use this data to uh, measure this, the rotation rate of the Earth uh, quite, uh, I wouldn't say easily, but it, it can be done after a fair bit of calculation, uh, but it's absolutely free. So um, I'm just going to show here a map of uh, some GPS satellites. This is from a great site called inthesky.org and uh, it shows the position of the GPS satellites at uh, different times of the day uh, so you can kind of see where they are in relation to your own position. Uh, there's also um, all kinds of, as I said, GNSS receivers uh, that are uh, reporting data to NASA uh, every second of every day and uh, the IGS International GNSS Service uh, has a map of all of these uh, different receivers and I've got it shown right here. So uh, you can see there's tons of them, and um, for our uh, little exercise today, uh, we're going to choose one GNSS receiver, which is on the equator. Uh, it's going to be in the Galapagos Islands here, which I've got shown as this the red dot here on the equator, and that's the one that we're going to use uh, to do our test um, with um, measuring the rotation rate of the Earth. Just to show what the GNSS receiver looks like, uh, this is a picture of the receiver on the Galapagos Islands. It's about two meters above sea level and um, it's uh, just set up with uh, an antenna. Uh, they, they have a log of uh, all the information on it which is available, uh, shows when the receiver has been changed, all of that kind of thing. So uh, there's plenty of information available and you can see its location. So uh, we know what we're dealing with when we're, we're getting data from this particular receiver. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about how we're going to do this. Now we've got a GPS satellite. In this case, we're looking at GPS 13, uh, or PRN 13, from December 1st, 2017. And this satellite is moving um, on the west side of the Gal Galapagos Islands and comes around, kind of circles around it, and then comes up on the east side and then leaves the field of view around uh, 1600 hours UTC. So uh, all of this time it's broadcasting a signal to the Galapagos Islands uh, GNSS receiver and uh, we know the XYZ uh, coordinates of both the satellite and uh, the receiver. We know the distance between them is uh, 24,252 kilometers, let's say at 9 uh, hours UTC. We also know the propagation time from the data which is around 80.8 .8 milliseconds and uh, we also know the speed of light. So uh, the, using the t propagation time and the speed of light, this should give us an exact match to the distance that we know. Now the problem is that we don't actually uh, get an exact match. We get a mismatch, which is shown on the right, and if this is shown by the red line, which is the actual uh, range difference that we get uh, over the course of this uh, transit of the satellite. So around 8 o'clock uh, UTC, uh, it's about uh, 35 meters uh, too far away from the satellite than it should be from its known geographical position. And uh, as we get down to like uh, 14, 15 hours, it's about uh, 20 meters too close. And the reason why is because the Earth is rotating. So the station at uh, GLPS is uh, moving away from us. So what they do with the GPS is they make a correction called the Sagnac correction, uh, which takes uh, what would be the actual distance moved by the Earth by rotating the XYZ coordinates and then applying that to the raw data that you get out from the, uh, from the calculation. And that's shown by this blue line on the graph. So uh, you can see that there's a very good match between the two lines uh, when you uh, calculate based on a rotation rate of 465.1 kilometers or meters per second, I should say, meters per second. And um, when you subtract uh, one from the other, you get uh, our uh, 
final error uh, in uh, the range, and this then is reduced from, let's say, plus or minus uh, 30, 35 meters down to now only plus or minus, let's say, 2 meters. So we get a much better uh, match between the actual distance uh, and the, um, the measured distance uh, after we take into account the rotation of the Earth. Now there is another way to do this kind of calculation. Since we know the actual uh, distance that the uh, calculation is out, like let's say at, uh, at um, 9 a.m. the calculation is out by 33 meters. So the, the target appears to be 33 meters too far away. Since we know the propagation time for the signal and we know how far off the uh, GL GPLS uh, station is moved, we can calculate uh, the velocity of the station with respect to the satellite by doing a simple calculation like V is equal to D over T, where D is the distance uh, that, this, that the station has moved and T is the time that it takes for the signal to get from the satellite to the receiver. Now the only problem with that is that there is uh, something called the cosine error, which is where uh, if the satellite is not directly behind the moving receiver, then there's an error based on the angle that the satellite makes to the receiver. So uh, in, in our case, because this is in three dimensions, we've got both the elevation and we've also got the uh, horizontal angle. So there's two angles we have to take into, into account. So I've got uh, the equation for uh, calculating that correction for the cosine error uh, shown um, just below here on the, on the drawing. And you can see that's uh, V is equal to D over T divided by the cosine of angle 1 times the cosine of angle 2. And when we plug in our actual angles of 15 and 20 degrees, our distance moved to 33 meters, and our time of uh, 81 milliseconds, we get a velocity of 450 meters per second that the receiver is moving away from the satellite which uh, is, is an approximate match to the actual rotation rate of the Earth. Now, there's, there's going to be a little bit of an error because there are residual errors with the, uh, the actual distance, um, which are, you know, have to be calculated out using like ionospheric propagation and tropospheric propagation, different things like that. So there's always going to be some residual errors, and because we're only using a single satellite, those errors can be a few meters. So we're not going to get the exact rotation rate of the Earth with one measurement, but if we were to do a whole series, let's say hundreds of measurements, we would probably get very close to 465 meters per second. Just to show another example, this is uh, also with the PRN-13 satellite and the GLPS receiver. Uh, but in this case, we're looking at, at um, 1430 UTC hours. So uh, in this case, the satellite is already on the east side of the Galapagos Islands. So the um, Galapagos receiver is now approaching the satellite. Also, the satellite is much higher in the sky. It's at 52.3 degrees um, in relation to the receiver and it's also 15 degrees out horizontally and, and in this case the, um, the distance traveled in the propagation time between the satellite and the receiver is 19.5 uh, meters so if we plug that into our calculation below we get uh, in this case now 466 meters per second which is a very good match to the actual rotation rate. So you can calculate this with the satellite uh, behind the moving receiver or in front of the moving receiver and uh, if you plug all your numbers in right you get a, a pretty good estimate of the rotation rate of the Earth at the equator.